call to order the meeting of Monday, November the 26th. If the clerk would please take the roll. Council Member Archibald? Here. Council Member Ashford? Present. Council Member Beaton? Here. Council Member Harris? Here. Council Member Pemberton? Here. Council Member Warden? Here. Mayor Rep? Here. You have before you the minutes from the regular meeting of November the 12th. Is there a motion to receive and file? So move. Council Member Ashford, is there a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, is there any additions or deletions? Uh, Mayor, uh, yes, under um, on the agenda where uh, where we did the voting on behalf of the uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I beg your pardon. The Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, in parentheses, it stated how we voted. Correct. And it was a secret ballot, and I would like that to be removed. It cannot be a secret Why? ballot. Mm -hmm. You have to have all your votes out in the open. Mm -hmm. So it was done for, for expediency that way, but the votes themselves have to be recorded as such. So why don't we just, just vote out loud? We could do that, then we'd have to do for one and then do for the other. Right. And it was easier to just do the ballot when there's more than one person. Oh, okay, I understand. So all right. They, they do have to go in and reflect it in the record. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes stand as submitted. We have one presentation tonight. If the clerk would please read that. Proclamation recognizing the Port Huron Northern Varsity football team on their district championship title. I'm going to go down to the podium, and uh, is the coach going to accept this and, on behalf of the team? Or if the whole team would like to come up to the podium, that's fine, too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I've never had this many men around. <laughs> this is quite that nice. <laughs> well, it's an honor to present this tonight. You guys should be really proud of yourself. You've done something that hasn't been done, and uh, that's really great. So I'm going to read this. Whereas the hard work, dedication, sportsmanship, talent, and exceptional team chemistry of the 2018 Port Huron Northern High School football team has empowered these student athletes to earn a district title for the first time in school history. And whereas the Port Huron Northern Huskies had a momentous and historic season winning their league, a district championship, and finishing the season with 10 wins to tie the school record that was set back in 1986. And whereas throughout the season the Huskies have built camaraderie with each other and their brotherhood helped them move through the ranks week in and week out. And whereas these achievements could not have been reached without the leadership of the coaches and the encouragement of the players' parents who together instilled in them the value of teamwork, imparted in them a desire for success, and help them to develop a sense of fair play and competition. And whereas the team has brought great honor, not only to themselves, but also to their school, their families, and to our community. Now therefore I, Pauline M. Rep, by the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Port Huron, and on behalf of council members Archibald, Ashford, Beeden, Harris, Pemberton, and Warden, do hereby issue this certificate of recognition to Port Huron Northern football team with sincere congratulations and best wishes for countless more successful seasons. Congratulations. <laughs> I just want to say thank you very much to my parents and my kids and the community of Port Huron for recognizing us and being behind us this past season. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, Mayor Rep, could uh, the council go down and give them a shake a hand or something? Sure can. We can get up. Get up. Go P H P F no was it P H N <laughs> hey, Let's say it together guys P come on P H N Is that the best you could do? Let me hear you tell us that. 
Go home. <laughs> All right, Port here, Northern. Go for it. I thought maybe you were going to sing the fight song for him. <laughs> oh. Move on now. It's public comment time. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to address the city council, please come forward. Give us your name, and you have four minutes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Catherine Skinner. I live at 3419 Stone Street at the north end of Port Huron. And I came tonight because, golly gee, I'm so disappointed. In all these past years, the city has looked beautiful at this time of year. And the snow could fall, and the snow would blow, and it would be snow blowing. But guess what's happened? Nobody's picked up the leaves. So this town looks really, a lot of expletives go through my mind, but I'll just settle for dumpy, OK? They went down our street probably two weeks ago. This is how much they took off the boulevard, about six inches. There was stuff in the street. There was all this stuff on the boulevard, all of those leaves. And guess what? I'm 68. How many times do you want me to rake them? I mean, what do we do? How do we fix this? I mean, I just heard her say, in service to the people of Port Huron, Obviously, something's gone wrong. Something's really gone wrong. If there was a chance for a vote of confidence, I would vote no, no confidence at all. You know, and just today, they picked up somebody's barrel of leaves on Florida, okay? And they jumped it into their thing, and there was a big clump right in the middle of the street. Did they pick it up? They're the ones that put it there. No, they didn't. They didn't pick it up. It's still a mess. And, and you can't tell me it's safe watching these cars go down on wet leaves. Somebody's going to get hurt. So I ask you, how do we fix this? I can't believe they're going to get all these leaves picked up before the snow freezes them, before the weather freezes them. <sighs> Can somebody give me help? Thank you. Thank you. I will have the city manager address the subject matter at the end of the meeting. Okay. The city manager. As long as we're done through the business, we don't have much on our agenda tonight. So. Has anybody else complained? We. I have had about three complaints. That's all I've had, myself personally. Only so. three. That's correct. Even down on Armour Street, Mr. Freed. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the City Council this evening? Good evening, Council members. My name is Michael Williams. I live at 1303 18th Street. Um, I have been a citizen of the uh, Port Huron area for about seven years now. And I am also a medical uh, cannabis caretaker. Unfortunately, uh, I've had an incident recently uh, with the law. Um, long story short, I wanted to see where the council sat as far as uh, recreational cannabis was concerned and medical cannabis was concerned. Um, because unfortunately, it seems that we're seeing that even though that we have certain laws in place, that we're still seeing um, certain gray areas and we're still seeing good people persecuted and prosecuted for trying to remain within the law and do what they do and help their community members. Um, by no means am I any threat to our community. I'm part of a hometown hero project. I'm a six-year Army veteran. 
I've never done anything to anybody. I've never harmed anybody. I've never stolen from anybody. I've never made a victim out of anybody. Um, but unfortunately, yet I sit with felony firearm charges, um, felony delivering and manufacturing, and maintaining a drug house. I have two children that I'm trying to take care of. I understand that I will have my day in court. That is not of your concern. But it is my concern as a citizen and for our children that are growing up, along with the other members of our community who don't speak up or don't really care to, um, what have you. I just wanted to see where this council stands and where our city stands as far as moving forward and not criminalizing good people over such things as medical cannabis or recreational cannabis. And if the city or our city was opting in or opting out or what the whole situation was on everything that's going on right now. Well, thank you for your comments. Uh, as far as the whole issue, the council has not met to discuss that, so we do not have a position at this point as a whole. So it's probably, I'm sure it's something we'll discuss in the near future, but we have not at this okay. point. Okay, absolutely. And if, uh, if any of you would ever like to talk to me for any reason, any insight, what, what have you, I'm very interested in getting involved. I've been very interested in politics for a while now. I try to follow what's going on. Um, I'm a firm believer in the Constitution and our Bill of Rights. I'm a firm believer in law in this country. You know, I served, I took an oath to defend the Constitution, and that oath does not die. And I still believe that there's a lot of fighting that needs to be done for our Constitution and our Bill of Rights and for the people. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the council tonight? Good evening, Good Mayor evening. and Council. My name is Terry Lamb. I live at 2314 Brandywine. And I would like to extend my apologies for missing the meeting um, two weeks ago. As most of you know, I'm a registered nurse at Port Huron uh, McLaren, and I work in an area that we cover 24 hours. And during the past 22 months that I had my seat here, my fellow colleagues switched their schedules around and covered my call, so I felt obligated that I would to do the same for them. And unfortunately, two weeks ago, I worked over 18 hours that day, so I'm sorry I missed the meeting. But I'm here tonight. I like to stay positive. It appears we have a great new uh, council to lead our city, and I would like to say congratulations and God bless. Thank you, Terry. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the city council this evening? Good evening, Mayor Rep, council members. I'd like to congratulate uh, council member Beeden and Pemberton on your new position and congratulations uh, council member Ashford for being reelected. Keep up the good work. My name is Mark Neal. 3045 Monticello board here and I'm here on behalf of McMoran Place Commission in regards to resolutions one and two I would ask that uh, we uh, have your support in adopting those two resolutions we are fortunate as a commission to uh, have two things on our bucket list sort of being checked off and first <laughs> resolution number one is a gift or a donation from the River Church that will allow us to upgrade our lighting and, and AV equipment and everything um, in the theater, which will bring us into the 21st century and um, allow us to, um, to save some money there on certain programs and also uh, provide a better service to the people that, that rent uh, McMoran Theater. The second item is uh, from PM Blau, that is the engineering and uh, design services for the plaza out in front of the um, McMoran Place. Um, we want to make that the town square, and this is just uh, putting formally our ideas that we've had in our head for many years, uh, putting them on paper, and hopefully that uh, they become a reality here in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And uh, I encourage your support on these two items. Um, it goes a long way in, in bringing McMoran Place um, up to date in our 
in our facility and uh, becoming an even greater asset to the city of Portland and their surrounding areas. So thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate your support. Thanks, Mark, and thanks for your dedication to McMorrin. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the City Council this evening? Seeing no one, I'll declare public comment closed. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Is there a second? Support. Councilmember Pemberton. We will take the vote. Councilmember Archibald? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? <clears throat> yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Pemberton? Yes. Councilmember Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. There was a couple of items on the consent agenda. Received and filed the November 6 election results for mayor and three council members as canvassed by the St. Clair County Board of Canvassers. Appointed uh, Councilmember Jeff Pemberton as a city council alternate delegate to the South, South, Southeast Michigan Council of Governments. Approve the reappointment of Councilmember Anita Ashford and the appointment of Councilmember Ken Harris as the alternate to serve on the Blue Water Area Transportation Commission for terms to expire November 24, 2021. And appointed Eric Witter as a street administrator for the City of Port Huron in all transactions with the State Transportation Department. Which takes us to from the City Manager, item one. Accepting the bid from Dean Marine and Excavating Incorporated in the amount of $155,321 for the placement of approximately 10 cubic yards of riprap around the raw water intake pipes at the water filtration plant. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Madam Mayor, um, quick at all. Yes, go ahead. You go, tell you, turn my speaker on. Um, I think you muted me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Madam Mayor and Council Members, before you have a, uh, uh, one bid, which is the only bid we could actually get, we had to call everyone and submit them twice. This is very specified work. It requires a diver and a barge system to actually put the rip wrap around our intake pipe. So it's just not like we're dumping uh, rock into the river. Um, we did solicit three firms. We only received one bid for this. We had budgeted, I believe it was 120 or 130. 130,000 for this project, so it did come slightly above uh, our, our, our budgeted amount. However, this will be paid for out of the water fund. If you have additional questions, Mr. Witter is here for those additional questions. Is there anyone on council who has any questions? When, when was the last time we did this? Or just the first, or? <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Center Council. This has not done, uh, been done before. Oh, okay. This is the first time. Okay. This intake's almost 100 years old, and recent inspections determined that the support structure is starting to erode underneath. Mm -hmm. So this is placing stone underneath to support that. So it'll last another 100 years then, huh? Well, past our time, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> okay, does this include installation costs also? Yes, this is the whole thing for the, the work thing. to mobilize with the barge, excavator, diver, and place all the stone. Okay, good. Any other questions? Yes, Councilmember Harris. Uh, when can we get this done? The completion date is October 1st of 2019, so we gave them next spring, summer, and fall to fit into their schedule depending on weather and when they can fit the work in. Hoping to get a better price, and we got one contract, or one bidder back. Madam Mayor, as uh, Mr. Witter has pointed out, throughout tonight's council meeting and into the future, I fear that you're going to see a lot of these technical contracts come back with one bid or no bid, or bids that are 5 to 10 percent higher um, than what we're typically seeing, specifically on streets and infrastructure projects, because of the shortage of talent and labor. It is really beginning to affect us. And I, uh, also, I think in this case, uh, even though it is over, and it's, uh, it, it has to be delivery and then the installation, you're probably coming out a little bit closer to where it should be at that point. So, so thank and, you. Yeah, it's a good bit. Council yep. Member Ward. Mayor, um, just from an engineering standpoint, these guys are going to be, once they excavate, you're saying underneath there to support it? Or is there some? No, they won't be doing excavation. They'll be placing large stone that's 8 by 12 inch and just hand placing those with the bucket and the diver underneath the steel support. Under, okay. So we don't have really any, there's no guarantee. No, it's it's really just add material underneath the steel support. 
Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. You're welcome. We'll take the vote. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to item two, please. Accepting the bid from Advanced Pool Services Incorporated in the amount of $19,750 for the refinish of the Waden Pool at Sanborn Park. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Beeden. Madam Mayor, before you have a bid from Advanced Pool Services, this is work. That the, this is a company that the city has done work with on other occasions, other pool work throughout the city. They've done an excellent job. This was an issue as well. We solicited three different companies. We only received, actually received none back, and had to go back and offer to work on the bid bond to get them to submit a bid. So it was more cost advantageous. Um, and Nancy Windsor is available for additional comment as well. Any questions, comments? Yes, could Nancy yes. tell us <coughs> what does this uh, refinishing, what does that involve, what is the scope? Mayor, Mayor and City Council, um, we, and I think uh, Jim's probably got some pictures here, but um, basically in the baby pool, the, the steps are completely collapsing. I guess I'll have some pictures here in a minute. Um, and also, a lot of the finish, the Mars site, it's basically like a plaster that goes over it. And there's many spots that there's larger divots from the Mars site as well. So you can see the um, step here. We tried to get this done in the spring, as City Manager Freed said, but we couldn't even get anyone to bid on it. So we had to do a temporary fix. Um, for this summer and we've had over 800 kids like in swim lessons over the summer so this is something that really needs to get done because there's many areas like that throughout the pool where the mar site's just mm -hmm. giving out so we were we were fortunate to get a bidder so that's why we want to get it in place before summer it looked like it's a safety hazard yeah it is if somebody had a fail you wouldn't have to worry about trying to replace right. it <laughs> right <laughs> yeah some money kind of did yeah. a lot of patching with yeah. uh, rob's helping the crew out there so um, we're really looking forward to getting it fixed for the summer. Mayor Rep, if I may, yes. what's the time frame? Um, we've given them a deadline of June 8th. June so um, it's kind of dependent on the water table because of where we are in weather in the spring. So it's, it'll be right before our opening. Thank you. When was the last time it was done? About five years ago. Okay. Yeah, and unfortunately with some of the tree coverage there and the water and just the the thawing and all that business, it just has not lasted that long. So. Any other questions? Yes, Council Member Warden. Um, five years ago, is, are they going to basically, they're going to refinish the whole thing? Are they going to yes. remove yep, layer? Yep, removing the, all the layers and yep. then redoing the whole thing. And as far as the material they're using, is there anything that's kind of has, say, this is going to last more than five years type it, um, We did the other two pools by this company with a, a product called Diamond Bright and they're going to use the same stuff so it should be okay. should be good this time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you Nancy. We will take a vote. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to item three. Accepting the bid from Gadar Coatings in the amount of $41,800 for the repair and resurface of the front tennis courts at Sanborn Park. Is there a motion? So moved. Council Member Ashford, is there a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? M yes. Madam Mayor, the item before you calls for crack sealing, the cracks in the tennis court. You see there the cracks that are the traverse cracking and the hairline cracking there. They will inject those cracks with like an epoxy type filling that has a warranty for I believe two years. Then they will restripe and reseal the entire court. And so the key of doing this uh, project now is that it prevents the cracks from getting bigger or worse. So we'll buy ourselves some time before we have to replace the entire courts. So you can see there the epoxy coming up and the cracks that they will fill. So they'll inject the cracks with sealant first and a, an epoxy mix that expands and contracts and then they'll seal and stripe. Questions from council? 
And what, <coughs> when will this work be taking place? In the spring. In the spring. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Harris. Just one, just one question. You know, as James pointed out here, it looks pretty, pretty bad. And I'm just wondering, are we going to get a two-year fix or a one-year fix? Or? You'll probably get three to five years of decent place time. We did this in the previous city I was at, about three to five years. But to redo these entire courts, you're talking three, four thousand dollars. Mayor Rep? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Um, will doing this bring us back to the level where Robinson can be played there again? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but Nancy <laughs> says <laughs> yes. I think there's still there. <laughs> no. It's a tennis tournament. <laughs> you from appearance, you may know I don't play tennis. So. I don't either, but I know what it is. <laughs> Any other questions? Discussion? Mayor Rep. Councilmember Warden. Just one last thing. We, we, we had the, the schools that had complete uh, you know, part of their thing, had tennis courts you know, installed and redone. And these uh, three bids here that came in, are any of these um, companies the ones that we that might have worked on some of the other local tennis courts that were recently uh, done, like for the school district and that? Um, Councilman Warden, I'm not 100% sure on who they used. I think it was an asphalt company, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, Goddard has done a lot of work for the tennis house, and I consulted Barb and Steve and their crew. Um, we've used them on many ba basketball courts and different things, and I do know their work's good. Um, I do remember calling one the school district used. I just, I, I believe it's an asphalt company, and I, I'm going to apologize. I don't off the top of my head. And the resurfacing is going to be whatever that material is that's the green and yep. different color. It's kind of like a, you mentioned an epoxy or something. Yeah, but it's I, actually called right away. And so we looked in with Barb and again, I'm not a huge tennis player either, but want to make sure the ball, you know, and so it is good views for the Robinson because as Sherry mentioned, they had to move their location after like 50 years of playing at Sanborn. They used Northern's courts this year. Um, so we did it, consult them quite a bit to make sure it would be, you know, good enough fix for the play. So thank you very much. Any other questions, discussion? Thank you, Nancy. We'll take the vote. Council Member Harris. Yes. Council Member Pemberton. Yes. Council Member Warden. Yes. Council Member Archibald. Yes. Council Member Ashford. Yes. Council Member Beaden. Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. We'll move on to resolutions. Uh, the first one, please. Accepting the donation from the River Church to purchase and install new stage lighting, state of art sound equipment, and a live streaming projector system at the McWarren Place Theater. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Support. Okay. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Pemberton. Madam Mayor, I'm going to ask is it Rob to come up, uh, Rob Churchill, our general manager for McMoran, to come up and give some detail on this. Do we have members of the River Church here? If you could raise your hand. Thank you. It's good seeing you. Um, as well here tonight uh, to talk about this donation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Rod and Bill coming from the River Church. Um, what we're looking at here is they came to us, I should go back even farther, in the six, seven months ago, I guess, they rented the church for a couple different events, um, and then they came to us about a month, month and a half ago, and they asked if we were interested in taking a donation for new sound equipment, new lighting equipment, new AV equipment, which is everything that is on our list for capital funding for um, the theater itself. And after talking to them several times, you know, they really are committed to making I think the city of Port Huron, which I'm kind of putting words, speaking for them a little bit, but committed to the city of Port Huron and making it a better place for, for everyone. And this is why I think they are interested in doing this for us. Rob, can you give us a general ballpark on what this, uh, the dollar figure of what an investment like this would look like? We don't have an actual number yet. We, we had a walkthrough last week with a sound and lighting company, but you know, you're talking over $100,000 probably in donation. Very nice. Uh, Mayor Rupp? Yes. Uh, is this going to be compatible with any of the existing, white, you know, I guess, it whether you have wiring or that, or you have to read? It will not be compatible with the existing stuff because this existing stuff is so outdated, we're actually going to replace it all. So, total replacement, okay. Yes. 
All right, thank you. Any other questions for Rob while he's up there? <laughs> Madam Mayor, I will just go out and say that I've consulted with our, our, our legal counsel on this and make sure there was no issues legally of us accepting this donation. I've also made it clear to the church, uh, you know, I, always, I believe we had a phone conference and I simply asked, what's the catch? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Uh, what's the catch? Uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, and so they assured me, and I'm not sure, Madam May, if you give permission to have one yeah, of them come up and speak to this. If you'd like to speak and say a few words, feel uh, free to and, come And up. tell us quite why. But, so You're there giving is, a donation. There is no time. catch. There's no quid pro quo. We have no contractual obligations with them to provide them any certain level of services or anything like that. This is we bona fide gift uh, with no strings attached. And so... Uh, I asked the question, what was the catch, because I uh, This skeptic, is Pastor so. Bill Wall. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, Rod Bricker is with me. He's our executive pastor at the River Church. And uh, as uh, James said, he asked what the catch was, and I told him there is no catch. Uh, we just really believe our church, our vision is to uh, make an impact in our community, um, uh, all for the glory of God. So we we want to... Um, pursue that at, uh, at every turn. And I think one of the things that we really um, have a heart for is to uh, lead the way in generosity, um, to create a culture of generosity in our community. We feel like the church should do that. Uh, we feel like that's something that's lost in the church today. And we want to lead the way and, and turn the tide where the church leads the way in generosity to the community. Instead of um, the church always looking for a handout, we want to be the ones to to give the, give the handout. Um, so that's just, uh, we, we've done this over the last several years. I've been the pastor for five and a half years there. My wife and I are co-lead pastors. And um, we, we've done something called the um, Blue, uh, Blue Water Love Week and uh, the last couple of years. And you may have heard of some of it, but we just uh, encourage our congregation the week before Easter to, to just love the people in our area by showing them gifts of kindness. Um, in an anonymous way. It's, it's kind of almost like a pay it forward type of thing, but we just want to bless people. So we just felt like this was something that, that uh, we were led to do, and we want to do that and uh, uh, be a blessing to the community of, of Port Huron. So thank you. Well, we thank you very much for your donation. Thank very you. much. Thank you. Is there uh, any other comments from council? Yes, I would like to hear from our corporate uh, our lawyer to make sure that everything is on the up here. I know we heard from the city manager, but legally, uh, I'd like to close this. Yeah, there there are zero legal issues with this. Okay. There's and no problem accepting a donation of this nature, just like you could accept a donation from any private individual or private entity. Okay, so is this on the scale of a leasehold? kind of agreement, you know, like leasehold, like a tenant, like you're paying for leasehold improvement? Uh, I don't. Like you I don't. make improvement? You're not familiar with that? No, well, I'm I had to check it out because I'm close to the church too, and when you go making improvements to other buildings, it's called leasehold. Do <laughs> you know, know about that executive? Yeah, there's, yeah. Th this, my understanding is this is a gift. It's not a yeah. improvement for the purpose of them then renting it and having yeah. some type of interest in it. They have no interest in it, so there's there's zero legal issues accepting this gift. Well, I'm glad to hear that, but, uh, but in, in, in the uh, church world, it is something, or in this world, we call leasehold improvements, and that is what's happening here, and it's okay for the church to give us this, and I really appreciate that Ma on Ma behalf of the city. Madam Mayor, I will say they do, they do lease it on Sunday in our negotiations. They asked what the catch was. They wanted no discount. Yes. They wanted no discount. They wanted no anything reduction in what they pay for renting that facility on a Sunday morning, which, by the way, um, Sunday mornings at McMorn, it's not really a hot time to rent a building. <laughs> so <laughs> it sits empty. Um, they made it clear that they expect no discount, no nothing in return for this donation, and that was made explicitly clear. And that's why I mentioned what I mentioned for that purpose. Okay. Thank We're you. Set. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member Pemberton. I just want to also personally thank you. Uh, as a pastor as well, it is rare to see the church actually do its job and give to the community instead of taking from the community in America. So um, thank you for what you're doing. This is a beautiful thing. Anyone else? Mayor Rep. I just want to thank every, as everybody else um, to step forward and, and see a need, uh, not, be, not having it being solicited and to say, hey, you know what? 
this is a beautiful place and let's let's do something for our community I really appreciate that um, and again looking forward to uh, to stop in there uh, after it's all done and installed and the updates for many many years to come thank you with that we will take the vote council member Pemberton yes council member warden yes council member Archibald yes council member Ashford yes Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to item two. Approving the agreement with PM Blog Incorporated for the professional engineering and design services for redesign and improvements to the McMoran Place Plaza. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Council Member Ashford, and I think I heard Council Member oh, Pemberton. You did. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't know yeah. was going to move. <laughs> I always try to wait and let you guys do it. <laughs> Okay, is there any discussion? Is this going to be our campus marsh? <laughs> campus marsh. <laughs> <laughs> this is our campus marsh. A long time coming. I can see that. That's a good one. That's going to be really nice. Yes. Very nice. Mayor Rep? Yes. Did you ask if there's some questions? Or? Yes, I did. Um, yeah, it, first thing is there's the one bidder that shows up here in the resolution, but I think it mentioned in the documents there was three other uh, firms uh, that actually came back are they you, we usually get at least a little list of who the other ones were on professional services you actually don't no. um, I can tell you that it was row professional services and who's the third one MKZ um, I will say we do not pick professional services based on bid price we pick on qualifications however uh, PM off whatever it is uh, they were the low bidder okay. uh, but that's coincidental and then I also I think this is you know again moving forward with uh, just something that is going to be an incredible, you know, project going forward. Um, there was, I think it's 40, uh, 44,000 or 40 some thousand. It's the expected just for at least the engineering costs on uh, this initially. Um, I think it mentions that we have about half a million bucks uh, with matching some grants and some other monies uh, to move forward with this. I'm just wondering when this. Uh, when they come with some different design elements, are they going to kind of bring this to us as they kind of come along? I mentioned even a potential future uh, spl uh, splash pad, but not at this time. But is there going to be some of the stuff brought forward to so, us? So there'll be a, uh, a community feedback session. But again, this is the role of the McMoran Commission. Mm -hmm. This will be their design and their oversight. I feel pretty confident that at some point the McMoran Commission will present their final findings. But throughout the design process, throughout the community feedback, this will be really led by the McMoran Commission. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, McMoran Commission. This is exciting uh, news to finally get uh, going on something like this. So uh, thank you for putting that time in and bringing this to, uh, to us today. Council Member Harris. Just one comment about the great job that the PM Blau has done through the county, Parks and Recreation. And and their, their track record is, is phenomenal. I think this is just going to get uh, a big step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a great addition to our downtown. Really great addition. Anything else? We will take the vote. Council Member Warden? Yes. <clears throat> Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. Uh, ordinances, number one, please. An ordinance to amend Chapter 36, Parks and Recreation, Article 1 General, of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances for the purpose of establishing consistent closing hours for all city parks and pool premises. Is there a motion? So move. Council Member Ashford, is there a second? Second. Yeah. Tom Archibald. Did you want to? Yeah, Madam Mayor uh, and Council, you have here just some various changes. The, the highlights are the closing of the parks moving till 9 p.m. Uh, we have no intentions. If you're just sitting there watching the sunrise or sunset at the park uh, and it's 9, 9.30, it doesn't get dark till 10, 10.30ish. Uh, what this does, though, it does give our police officers the leverage to eject people who are being disorderly um, at 9 o'clock. Sometimes those who abuse uh, alcohol show up to the park cause problems. This gives the police the authority to remove them if need be. However, if you're not causing problems, 10 o'clock or sundown will typically be honored. Uh, secondly, uh, the Huron Light Ship is 
uh, we, to prevent people from pulling their boats up, boarding the light ship. Uh, it says the city manager or his or designee or representative. The designee I would make would be the Port Huron Museum and their staff and who they seem fit. They currently operate the day-to-day -day facility, but it prevents people from pulling up in the middle of the night and docking their boats to here on light ship and damaging that, or hopping on that ship in the middle of the night. And it gives our police the authority to remove them from that ship if need be. So now all the, all the hours will be consistent in all of the Correct. parks too. Okay. And this was put together by Nancy Windsor and our chief of police. Is there any questions or discussions? Uh, Mayor Rep. Council Member Warden. Um, just reading, and again, I appreciate the red line uh, version that shows the previous um, crossed out. Um, and again, it just references, you know, Lakeside Park and Court Street Pool, um, Sanborn Park, again, Lighthouse Park, Riverside. Um, there's other, you know, again, parks and in, in, in within our city that aren't mentioned directly in here, and I'm just wondering if this ordinance change that all of them are closing um, from 9 p.m. to 7 p.m. is going to be affecting all of them other, more than what's just listed in this ordinance? Yeah, 36-4 uh, says closing hours for all city parks and pool premises. Okay. Yeah, i just like to get, I see that it's only a few things named in here. Um, I just had, last summer, um, I had some feedback for some people that uh, went down, uh, you know, to a city-owned little turnout, but it was whether it's designated a, uh, in the city uh, parks or city um, a facility, and they were, I guess, given feedback about not being able to be there after a certain time, like 10 o'clock or what it was for fishing and stuff like that. Um, is this also going to affect that on Again, some of those if other? they're not causing problems, the police typically do not eject. Um, at the turnout uh, down there, we received from residents dozens of complaints about in the middle of the night, fishermen out there talking, playing music till all hours of the net parking. Uh, we had two fishermen get in a fight last year because somebody took their fishing where I, I typically fish here, this is my spot type thing. Uh, so um, we do get, so our police officers, I applaud them by being reasonable and rational. If you're just out there throwing a line in to catch your uh, walleye, it's not gonna be an issue. But if you're out there blaring music, fighting, causing noise, they're gonna be reasonable and rational. Yeah, so everything we post then for nine o'clock. Correct. Okay, so yeah, appreciate it. You got Mayor too? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor Archibald. Could we hear from counsel on, or from our legal counsel on the, uh, I'm not sure I like this idea of we're gonna close it at nine, but if you behave, you can stay, but you can't. And th that's very subjective. And what are we opening ourselves up to for doing that? Excellent question and everything you think. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was not asked to review this in advance, um, and I heard the explanation tonight. I have some of the same concerns that you raised, um, but uh, I think it's a relatively minor issue. Um, you could have a selective enforcement issue. That would be about all you're opening yourself up to. Really. So we don't open ourselves up to anything, any legal issue that if, if you throw me out and I don't believe I was disruptive, that I can't come back and sue the city? Or well, you, you can get sued for just about anything. much anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but I don't, don't want to give a reason. <laughs> your only concern would be if it was based upon a protected classification. Right. Okay. That would be your main issue. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, the way it reads technically, even if somebody's not being disrupted, they could be asked to leave. Correct. So, yeah. We currently have this happen now. I mean, it doesn't get dark till 10, 30, 11 o'clock. It's some for those very short windows in the summertime. We've had people at Lighthouse Beach who are just out there not causing problems. Um, most of our officers have a uh, pretty good temperament and we've never had an issue. Uh, they also have a pretty hot, long call list in the summertime that keeps them pretty busy. So at least they're concerned. So it is already happening now to a degree. But if you, you are correct. It is subjective. Mayor Rep, Member just Warden. listening to this, I just, if we could have legal counsel maybe review this a little more and maybe if there's a suggestion, um, maybe some wording of some of the other, you know, some, some way to come up with some other wording that might address some of that, I'd like to hear it, I guess. I'm just thinking ahead and the 9.30, it's sunny out in summer and, uh, you know, 
just we really and, but again on some of the parks that are the major ones that have so much so much pop, you know uh, daily you know turnout there we need to clear those those off to get get it out or our poor city staff is going to be there forever and under those undue circumstance you know uh, questionable circumstances so we just maybe kind of keep a you know kind of a overview I you know look on this thing and how it affects overall yeah, I, I mean, the way it's drafted is fine. It's it's the, the discussion about how you're going to enforce it, and that's going to be, you know, at the discretion of your uh, your law enforcement. Okay. Thank so you. It's really not a drafting issue. It's more of an enforcement issue. Okay. Thanks. So did you move it from 10 to 9 o'clock just to? Because we're having issues. We're at 930. You got people who are a little on the sauce, a little disorderly, who need to, who need to go home. So that's the issue. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just getting its first reading tonight. That's what it is. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. It is kind of a you're saying uh, leave at nine unless. <laughs> so it is kind of a um, an odd way of putting it. So we have that. But we're essentially doing that now. It's just at ten o'clock. The only difference is by ten o'clock it becomes a real issue. Well, at 10 o'clock is dark, too, so it's understandable. So I don't know if you, at 9 o'clock. Nancy wants to speak, so we'll let her up here. We'll let her speak. This is her, this is her rodeo with the parks. Okay. Well, Mayor and City Council, the other thing that this ordinance addresses, like you said, um, uh, Councilman Warden, is um, there was only three parks that were listed in the ordinance. So it was like Lighthouse, Court Street, and Lakeside. This will now incorporate all the parks as we're starting to upgrade all the different parks. Our, our police officers are having issues at some of the areas where, you know, we're doing new stuff at Optimus, new stuff at Knox, new stuff at Palmer, and none of those parks had an, a closed time at them. So <clears throat> Chief Platzer and I had lots of discussion as to, because in the fall, you know, it gets dark at 5, and we've been having some issues at, some major issues at some of the parks. This gives them the opportunity to, you know, then some parks said at dusk, which is very open as well to what is dusk to you, how do they enforce that? So this just gives them a little more definitive time, even at Lakeside, if we feel like things are getting <clears throat> unruly, which sometimes they do, especially when we close the bathrooms. And our officers have been amazing at Lakeside with that, but it gives them a little more teeth to say, listen, Park's closing at 9, so it's time to move along because right now they don't have the teeth in any ordinance. There's just, it's just too loose across the board. This will now have a closing time for all parks, not just three. Nancy, when we close our parks, for instance, if we close at 10, yes, it takes a good 45 minutes an hour to get everyone to clear out, right? Yes, and, it, and I mean, let's be perfect. Guys, it's not like, you know, the police department's over at Optimus, like, it's 9 o'clock, time to get going. But, you know, there has been some issues, and in the fall and the winter and whenever, where, you know, residents are asking for that as well. They want, you know, they want, and even at Palmer we've had that. So it just gives them that enforcement tool that they need if needed. Do you have and issues when it's like, say, it's dark at 5.30? So if right. the park's open until 9. That's why we had to pick. I know, I'm just yeah. saying, is there any way it should be seasonal? Meaning, based on the fact that uh, in the uh, starting, you know, in the late fall, it's dark at least 536. I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing that out. For, yeah. I, I mean, we, we just tried to pick a tech because it's also, you know, it turns into, you know, signing everything and put, you know, like having a consistency so people are, you know, I know they've had some issues at the parks even in the fall, hopefully in the winter we're starting to, but then you just are starting to change it so much. It's, you know, we've so gone back and forth. I should be, or if it could say yes. nine o'clock or dark, whichever happens first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So or you if could it's dark at six o'clock, then the park's closed. When the time change, it could reflect that. Yeah. Spring mm -hmm. forward, spring back, and then. I don't know, just food for thought, consistent. that's all. And we do have time, certainly, if there's anything that you think that could be okay. tweaked, or we, you know, you. if we give it its first reading tonight, it's gonna come back again. Yeah. at the next council meeting for final enactment. It's just food for thought. And, and the biggest thing, like I said, is trying to, like, you know, we're having problems at Optimus one day, maybe it's not listed. Like, yeah. Court Street's listed at closing at midnight, which I don't know. 
that's, the reasoning yeah, that's behind that, you know, know, but it's just kind of bring air everything on the same page. Yeah. I just, sorry, one more question. I'm just thinking, um, you know, like Sanborn, Sanborn tennis courts we're redoing. Summer's nice. Lights are on. I think there's still lights there at night. They're going to turn off. Yeah. They're going to turn off at nine in the middle of summer because the park's closed and those people aren't going to be able to play tennis, you know. Um, just thinking of you know, sledding, whether it's dark now at 5.30 in the winter, some people go and sled over at Palmer Park, you know, at it, dark. So we, you have a real, <laughs> this, is a, tough, again, again, no, this not, is a tough time it's, frame. It's like City Manager Freed said, yeah. it's not like the police are going to yeah. go around and shut the lights off at every park. I mean, it's okay. it's just giving them the enforcement. I guess if Chief Pletcher has anything to say on that, but I think it's just giving them the enforcement tools that they need mm -hmm. if there is a problem, which we have had some in the different okay. parks. So. And, yeah, and, and Mira and, and Nancy, and I think we ought to give them the opportunity, sort of like an embedded test, to see how it works. And yes. we always can revisit this and amend That's this. Yes. But uh, without seeing it and calling all the shots up here, we haven't lived through it yet. Yes. But I think it ought to be given its chance to, to see how it does play out. You have more information to make a intelligent decision after that. Yeah, and I yeah. like to put signage in all the parks. Yeah, I think a lot of people yeah. ask that. And again, you can't really sign things in so Cite an ordinance, an ordinance right. because we didn't have one yeah. for Albert. Right. So we're not expecting the police to go through and make a sweep or no. anything. You no. know, uh, it's still, you know, so we're, we're kind of taking this way out down the road. Yeah. Again, you it's know. just giving them the enforcement, yeah, the enforcement tools that they, they need. need that. So. Well, if there's no other questions, uh, thank, you. thank you. We will take a uh, vote on the first reading. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. That, that concludes our agenda. I would like to ask the city manager if you please address the leaf issue. Yes. Um, thank you for your public comment concerning the leaf issue. Um, you are correct. It looks terrible out there. Um, I will tell you though, um, we have to give some, some credit to MTERA. They have now four trucks on the road. Uh, unlike in the last seven years, we do what's called field notes where we document the weather conditions for each day. It has been in probably seven to eight years before we've had this much participation in snow um, this early into November. So we typically started our leaf pickup two weeks early. And for my first three years here, I was bombarded with phone calls. Uh, tell me, you guys are idiots driving around, there's no leaves down. Okay, well, I agree with you on that. They were driving around, there was no leaves down. So we moved it to a shorter window with an option for a, a third additional pickup. So we have two scheduled, then we have this third additional pickup if we need it, because so we can't trust the leaves. The leaves began falling pretty much all at once this year. Uh, they started on zone one. We had significant rainfall. We've had significant rainfall and compared to the last, if you go back and look at the, the field notes or that actual weather conditions for the last uh, four to five years, uh, when you have leaves that are wet, it takes twice as long. They don't suck up as fast, they don't suck up as much, and the trucks are now carrying water weight on top of that. And so it literally takes twice as long. So we have now seen it take about from a week to do a zone to now about two weeks. I live on zone one. My pickup was three, three days late. I actually was grateful for it because my leaves came down late and I was able to get two rakes in. Uh, they are now starting uh, next week on zone one. They will move from the north to the south. They had started in the south and moved north the last time. We began flipping them because we had residents on either side who complained. Why does the south get picked up last? Why does the north get picked up first? We have received those complaints. Um, MTER does have four trucks out there. They're fully staffed. Um, it is difficult. It's a soupy mix right now. I don't even know how they're going to pick up with a vacuum my leaves because of the amount of rain. They'll probably have to start using buckets soon. Um, there will be snow tonight with freezing temperatures. They will freeze up. If you go back and look at the field notes from the last four years, we did not have freezing or snow in the last, I think it's five years at this time of the year. So we have a new company who's, we've always had issues when we have a new company. Uh, to their credit, they've purchased additional equipment and staff and they're out there um, and they're dealing with the immense conditions. So it does look terrible. They are taking longer. Um, but they're, you, this is significant weather they're dealing with as well. Um, as for your complaints about the cleanup, I will talk, take that up with the company. Uh, I, we took up an issue uh, with some bins that weren't getting properly put in the lawn. 
And so uh, as they learn the ropes, we will address it. But one thing we are, uh, we tell people is respond to us if there's an issue. Uh, M. Tara has a, a, a field manager with a pickup truck. So he can drive you. So if you call in your concern to the public works, within a few minutes we can have someone at your house taking a look at it to address the issue. M. Tara is very responsive, but I would encourage people follow the proper channels so we get that complaint. Either call our DPW or call M. Tara so they can get someone out there. Um, but we are working through it. It's going to be a difficult season. Uh, so I agree. We don't normally go back and forth like this, so it's so kind of... I, know I don't want to. It's just that, okay, my pickup, as yours, is zone one. It was supposed to be picked up last Monday. Correct. And here we are this Monday, and you're saying they're not going to come till next Monday? It's a, so when they, when they pick up, if it says the day the pickup, that doesn't mean they're going to pick you up that day. That begins that cycle, which it takes about a week to do the entire cycle. So if there is... Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's about a seven-day window they have to complete that zone. But they are behind, like I said, they are behind. The four trucks they have running are behind because of the amount of weight and the water and the precipitation. I have field notes that show seven years ago, six or seven years ago, I can be exact, <clears> that we had trucks that were picking up ice uh, leaves in the snow December 12th, and people were calling complaining. So, yeah, which is pretty bad. I would say worse than this year. Thank you. Is there anything else to come before the council this evening? I'd like to thank my fellow council members who are really like to meet to the uh, transportation uh, committee. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm welcome out uh, here. It's on board. Mayor Rep. Yes, council member. Just a Ward. few comments real quick. Um, number one, uh, it's good to see you, uh, council member uh, uh, Terry Lamb. Uh, that's very classy, and I really appreciate you coming down. Um, you know, we had Councilmember Ruiz here last week, and uh, it's good to see you. Um, uh, just a couple things downtown, uh, just not always downtown, but I just have to sh share that, uh, that you know, not only Thanksgiving people come in, in town, um, most of the uh, building owners and, uh, and uh, I think that the Parks and Rec or the street crew uh, got out there early and actually put some, all the decorations up. The place it looks beautiful. They were working nonstop on the lights. Thank you, um, and getting those trees uh, that are lined uh, downtown as well. Uh, I thought there was a, uh, um, you know, Friday uh, after Thanksgiving, I got to spend the whole day downtown uh, with a little help decorating the windows in the Kresge uh, building down there, and we spent the rest of the day going to the local restaurants and over to the Sperry Theater and over to McMorrin and then Chef Shells and there was just an awful lot of people downtown. It was just great to see. And then of course that uh, Santa uh, parade that we had downtown was a, a tremendous turnout. It was great weather um, for that and I just, uh, all I heard uh, it, it, up and down line, line downtown it was just a wonderful thing to see. And I just wanted to make sure that we uh, also, uh, I did stop over to that uh, Larry Mann's uh, high school hockey tournament as well over at McMorrin. Um, again, there's so many things to do. It was wonderful to see so many people doing different things and, and just listening to all the positive feedback um, uh, from people that were back in town visiting for family or in town for the showing off. Uh, a very, very positive, positive uh, view. So, thank you. Is there anything else? I would just like to, uh, I guess the biggest news I had over the weekend is that they contain 100% the fires out in California. I know. And my That's heart good. goes out to them. I was sitting in church and I lifted, uh, I was supposed to be listening to the pastor, but anyway, I was really glad that they got that under control. Yes. Anything else? There is hockey this weekend, too, at McMoran. Starts Friday night. Uh, Silver Stick Regionals. So... Lots of things going on, and the Santa Parade was very nice. Lots of people downtown for that. Lots of people. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So we'll move. Adjourned. <laughs>